فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be speaking about التوحيد الألوهية التوحيد الألوهية is the توحيد which is the conclusion of the message of all prophets الزبدة الرسالة الإلهية it is the conclusion it is the gist of what Tawheed is about. This is the Tawheed that nations refuse to acknowledge. Nations refuse to accept from their prophets. And every prophet that came, this is the Tawheed in which he wanted to instill in the hearts of his people. And it's because of this Tawheed that Jannah and the Nar was made. And it's because of this Tawheed in which battle and fighting was permitted. So it is this Tawheed ولذلك when you look at the علماء and they define توحيد normally they define it as توحيد التوحيد هو إفراد الله بالعبادة توحيد means singling Allah in عبادة when we already know that توحيد الألوهية is a branch I mean it is one of the types of a توحيد so defining توحيد as to mean what توحيد الألوهية is which is to single Allah in worship is to show you that the most important Tawheed that nations refuse to accept is this one. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran that every single prophet that came, this is the message that He came from, with. From Nabiullah Adam alayhi salam to Nabiullah Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ We have not sent before you, O Muhammad, مِنْ رَسُولٍ a messenger, illa nuhi ilayhi annahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budun. Muhammad, we did not send any prophet before you except we send this revelation on him which is to worship Allah alone and not to associate partners with, with him. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجَتَنِي بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَجَتَنِي بِالطَّاغُوتِ Every single prophet that was sent to his people, this is what he said to them, أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاشِبَ اللَّهَ وَجَتَنِي بِالطَّاغُوتِ and stay away from everything that is worshipped besides Allah. Ijitanibu, stay away from kullu ma'ubida min dunillah. Everything that's worshipped besides Allah, stay away from it. Only worship Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He tells us every single prophet. After telling us that all prophets came with this, He then showed us how prophets spoke to their nations. For example, look at Nabi Allah Nuh. Nuh alayhi salam, we all know, He was sent to His people for how many years? 950 years Allah tells us in the Quran Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laqad arsalna Nuhan ila qaumihi falabitha fihim 1000 sanatin illa 50 ama 950 years Nuh stayed with his people and pay attention here 950 years the message in which he was calling to that he was making sure his nations understood was what ifradullah bil ibadah because Allah says to us ولقد ولقد لقد أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه فقال يا قوم اعبدوا الله ما لكم من إله غيره نوح came to his people and he said to his people ما لكم من إله غيره you have no إله you have no one to worship besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى only worship him don't deserve there's nothing that is deserving of worship other than Allah تبارك وتعالى and then Allah تبارك وتعالى he tells us every single nation how every prophet specifically spoke to his nation. So we saw Nuh alayhi salam. Look at Nabiullah Hud. Wa ila adin akhahum huda. An i'budu Allah, ya qawm i'budu Allah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. Every single, Nabiullah Hud came to his people. An i'budu Allah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, tells us. Wa ila thamud akhahum salihan. An i'budu Allah, ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. Nabiullah Isa ibn Maryam, for instance, Allah says about him. لقد كفر الذين قالوا إن الله هو المسيح ابن مريم وقال المسيح يا بني إسرائيل يا بني إسرائيل اعبدوا الله ربي وربكم إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة 
Allah tells us about Isa ibn Maryam. When he said to his people, Ya, ya Bani Israel, all oh, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, Ya'qub, Allah Rabbi, worship my Lord, wa Rabbakum and your Lord. Worship my Lord and your Lord. Innahu man yushrik billahi, anyone who associates partners with Allah. Innahu man yushrik billahi, faqad harram Allahu alayhi al-jannah. Allah has made jannah haram from him. Wa ma'wahu al-nar. And Allah has made the hellfire his abode. Wa ma'li al-zalimina min ansar. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he say to his nation? He said to them, Qulu la ilaha illa Allah tuflihu. Say la ilaha illa Allah, you're going to find success, prosperity. And then they said, أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدًا إِنَّ هَذَا إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عُجَابٌ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala also said about them, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ When لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ said to them, arrogance comes into them. And when he says to them, say لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ, what do they do? They say, and they respond by saying, with all of the ilahs that there are out there, if you turn them all into one, إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عُجَابٌ So, this is the amazing thing now. We saw Nabi Allah Adam, uh, sorry, Nabi Allah Nuh, sorry. we saw what he said to his people. We saw what Nabi Allah, um, Nabi Allah Isa ibn Maryam, what he said to his people. Nabi Allah Salih, Nabi Allah Hud. We saw our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, Nabi Allah Ibrahim. Allah tells us in the Quran, قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِمْ إِنَّا بُرَاءُ مِنْكُمْ وَمِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ أَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ All of those prophets Allah commanded us to take their path. He says فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِهِ Follow their path. Tread on their path. Do as they did in their messages. Nuh alayhi salam as you all know, he was sent to his people for how many years? 950 years. Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam. 950 years he was calling them to what? Ibadatullahi wahdah. Worship Allah alone. Nabiullah Isa ibn Maryam. Nabiullah, the question that arises is that prophets saw the importance of a tawheed. And we were commanded to follow their path. We were instructed specifically by Allah. فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِي the reason why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commanded all those prophets to call to this one particular message in which they had in common, and of course there were other things which they were calling to, is because of the importance of this. This is the asas. This is the foundation. Alam tara kayfa darab Allahu matalan kalimatan tayyibatan kashajaratan tayyibatan asruha thabit wa faruha fi sama. This is the foundation. If every single thing is built correctly, then the foundation. If the foundation is correct, then the house will not tumble down. It will not collapse if the foundation is strong. If the tawheed of ifradullah bil ibadah is strong, the people will find safety. They will find guidance. They will find prosperity. ولذلك الله تبارك وتعالى يتوز إن القرآن الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم أولئك لهم الأمن وهم مهتدون. Now pay attention. In this ayah, Allah تبارك وتعالى tells us if a people come with tawheed, stay away from shirk. They come with tawheed. They will find two things. أولئك لهم الأمن safety. Our governments, our countries, our land, everything will be safe. وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And we will be guided people. If we strict, stick to Tawheed correctly, inshaAllah Ta'ala in this lesson we're going to know what it is. But all of this I'm talking about is the importance of this Tawheed. I'm trying to drive that home. Nuh alayhi salam as I was mentioning before, 950 years. This is his da'wah. 950 years. That is not 2-3 years. No one from amongst us can live this long. Wallahi, no one can live this long. Ha, not even half. Not even one-seventh of this. One-ninth. Hatta people don't reach. Majority of people die between the ages of 70. Huh? 60 to 70. Majority of the people die between that age. أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِينَ وَسَبْعِينَ وَقَلِيلُ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ As the Prophet said. My, the span of my ummah is between 60 and 70. Nuh came and he called his people for how many years? 950 years. What is it that he said to his people? لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ This is his message. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. That is what you and I both know about our neighbor Allah Nuh. If I asked you more about Nuh Ali's life, you'd probably not know. But you all know and we all know that the message of his da'wah was what? تَوْحِيدُ الْأُلُوهِيَا how is it then possible? A person is saying to the people, I, 
I am going to bring you safety on your lands. I'm working towards that. I'm working to guiding all of you. But nowhere do we find him speaking about the backbone of the da'watul anbiya'i wal rusul. The backbone of the message of the prophets and the messengers. That's gharib. Shocking. The truth of the matter is, do you know who is a freedom fighter? Do you know who is a liberator who liberates the people and fights for their rights? It's the one who takes them out of the shackles of their whims and their desires and shaitan and brings them to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخِ صَالَحِ Ibn Abdullah Ibn Hamad Al-Usaymi He said in a line of poetry He said Harabu min al-riqqi al-ladhi khuliqu lahu Fabulu bi riqqi nafsi wa shaytani They ran away from The shackles in which they were created They ran away from the slavery In which they were created for They ran away from that They were created to be slaves to Allah They ran away from that So what did they fall into? Fabulu bi riqqi nafsi wa shaytani But they became slaves for their own nafs, and they became, uh, uh, they became slaves for the shaitan. A person who does not call the people to tawhidul uluhiyya is not freeing the people. He's allowing shaitan to keep them as hostages. He's allowing shaitan to keep them as captives. And the anbiya and the rusul, their mission and their goal was to what? Is to free them from that. And it was to bring them to what? It was to bring them in what? the joy and the happiness of worshipping Allah alone. And that is why every da'wah that is not based upon Tawheedullah, then that da'wah is fashal. It's, there's no way that that da'wah will reach anywhere. And there's no way that da'wah is going to be prosperous. وَرَبُّ الْكَعْبَ it won't. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, every prophet, he called to this message. They spent all of their lives. And if you say that there is a way to give da'wah, other than the ways, ways of the Prophet, then you yourself, in, enough for you to know is how misguided that statement of yours is. You are a witness for the misguidance of that statement. So be of those who call to this. Spend the rest of your life, imma mantuqan, o mafhuman, either directly you're calling the people to Tawheed al or even when you're talking about other topics, you always try to bring Tawheed into it. Because this is why we were created for. This is why Allah brought us to this world. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that I've spoken about that point. And the importance of a tawheedul uluhiya. And how it's needed. I'm going to now move on to what is it tawheedul uluhiya? And what does it actually mean? So that was just a, a muqaddimah. An introduction of the importance of this tawheed. I've spoken about that. Now I'm going to be speaking about, inshallah ta'ala, the, what you can see on the board, inshallah ta'ala. Which is, what does it mean, al-ilah? Okay? And what does ifradullahi bil-ibadah mean? And those are the two things, if you do not have with you, you don't have tawheed al-uluhiyah. Ma'ana al-ilah. You have to perceive this correctly, my beloved brothers and sisters. Ma'ana al-ilah. What does ilah mean? The word ilah, in the Arabic language, so... This meaning that I wrote on the board, which is ma'an al-ilah, the meaning of ilah, is what the language holds. Pay attention. I want you to point, uh, write this note down. Ma'an al-ilah, lughatan wa shara'an. Lughatan wa shara'an. When we look at the kitab of Allah, we're going to see what it means. But for the lugha, the language first. The word ilah, fi lughati, it comes from the a a li ha ya Ya lahu aliha ya lahu ma'luh. This is what it comes from. It comes aliha ya lahu ma'luhan. Aliha ya lahu. Ilah comes from this. Very good. Or if you wish to, you can say and turn this into what? Ilahatan. You can say Aliha Ya'lahu Ma'lu Ilahatan. Which basically means Aliha Ya'lahu 
He worships him. أي المعبود. مألوه أي معبود. مألوه means معبود. المعبود. The one who's worshipped. أليها يأله مألوه المعبود. الذي يعبد. This is what the the Arabic scholars of the language. This is the way they explain it. If you look at the قوامي and the معاجم, this is the meaning that you will find. So that's what it means linguistically. Technically, the word المألوه it means المستحق, the one who deserves أن يعبد, the one who deserves to be worshipped. So you see the istilah meaning, the technical meaning in our religion is not just معبود, the worshipped one. Are you there? Pay attention. It's the one who deserves to be worshipped. The technical meaning, it adds an extra point to it, which is the one who deserves to be worshipped. Who's the one who deserves to be worshipped? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The evidence in the Quran that shows this meaning, that ma'aluh, ma'ilah is ma'bud, is qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 62. Allah says, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ هُوَ الْبَاطِلِ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ Allah is ilah. That is because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. That's the technical meaning. The one who deserves to, to be worshipped. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says وَمَا مِنْ إِلَاهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ in Surah 2, Ali Imran, Ayah 62. We've now come to understand the meaning of ma'na al-ilah, it means al-ma'bud. So that means when I want to say la, or I say la ilaha illallah, or a person is coming into Islam and they, and they are saying la ilaha illallah, what do they mean by that? They mean this. They mean la, oh, ilah. We see the word al-ilah here, right? Sah? So put a, two lines under it. So we say, La ilaha illallah. Pay attention. La ilaha. Ilah we just took is al ma'bud. So we just write it down. We say, La ma'bud. Because ilah is ma'bud. Illallah. The scholars, they differ amongst themselves. Does it just have to be one word or can it be a jar and a majroor? Can we just say haq or can we say bihaq? Where did they get that from? Are they, they just putting it from it from their own pocket? The word haq? No, they got it from the ayah. Which ayah? Surah Al-Hajj, ayah 62. Didn't Allah say, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقَّ هُوَ الْحَقَّ Allah is the one who deserves, who is rightfully His rights. To be worshipped alone. So they got it from that ayah and they placed it here. Illallah. Now, anyone who brings any other meaning that doesn't relate to this meaning is incorrect. So if a, so a person says, لا معبود بخالق illallah or لا رازق they, they change the word here and they say, they turn it into what? لا رازق إلا الله لا مدبر إلا الله لا مالك إلا الله We're going to say that meaning is incorrect. The reason why it's incorrect, we're going to come to it in details, inshallah, when we speak about ibadah. It means لا معبودة There's none worthy of worship. The worthy comes from here. Worship, except Allah. You're saying there's no one who deserves to be worshipped. What does worship mean? We're going to mention it here, inshallah ta'ala. Faradullah bil ibadah, what the meaning of ibadah means. This word, when the Prophet said it, that this was what was meant by it. La ma'buda bi haqqin, ama la ma'buda haqqun illa Allah. The disbelievers understood that. And that's why when he said to them, Qulu la ilaha illa Allah. Say this word, la ilaha illa Allah. you're going to find prosperity. Kuffar of Quraysh. They looked at the Prophet and they knew what he wanted from them. They knew he was trying to say, لا معبود بحق إلا الله. And that's why they responded with a correct answer. The answer is correct in the sense where they, the, they, the understanding was correct. Their understanding was correct. What did they say? أجعل الآلهة إلها واحدا إن هذا لشيء عجاب. 
That shows you they understood the message. They were correct in their understanding, but they, 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 were, dis, they were misguided in not wanting to implement it and take it on board. They said, do you make all of the gods that are out there and you disregard them and you don't give them their rights and you just want to give it to one? Wallahi, that's something fascinating. Allah also said to us in another ayah, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ When لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ is said to them, قُولُوا لَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah look what they look what they do. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Arrogance. Sometimes you find some believers who say, I'm going to teach you Tawheed. You say, and I'm wahid. And I'm wahid. So this is what? وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Don't be arrogant of this word. This word has a meaning and it's important. And we're going to speak about prophets of Allah. We're asking Allah not to make them fall into shirk. So who do you think you are to not want to know this meaning of this word? Rabbi Junubni wa Baniya Na'bud al Asnam. Ibrahim, who spent the, all of his life. Wa sabiha Ibrahim wa Baniya wa Yaqub. Ya Bani, inna Allah astafa lakum al-dina. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. He's their children on his deathbed. He's saying, Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. Who is he saying it to? Bani, who were prophets. Yusuf and the likes of them. They're saying to their children, don't die upon, except upon Tawheed. Tawheed, hold on to the oneness of Allah. Worship Him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? And Allah wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدْ إِسْطَفَيْنَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Ibrahim alayhi salam. So لا معبود بحق إلا الله That's the message they all understood from it. You have Muslims, so-called Muslims, grave worshippers. They didn't understand the meaning of لا معبود حق الله بحق إلا الله. And then they call themselves موحدين when Muslims أهل التوحيد. It's not true. Because you haven't even understood what لا إله إلا الله means. Pay attention. It's important. People can go confused on this. Now we've understood the first thing that Tawheed al stands on, which is معنى الإله, to understand what إله means. Don't conflate between the two, معنى الرب and معنى الإله. Oh, this is where the problem arises. We already spoke about معنى الرب, and we're now speaking about, about معنى الإله. But there's something I need to mention before I move on. It's something that I have to mention, which is لا إله إلا الله. It stands on two pillars. As you can see, two meanings that are in it. The first one is لا إله. In the Arabic language, that is called a what? That's called, that's called a nafi, negation. And we have إلا الله, which is what? Which is, which is known as إثبات. You need to negate uruhiyyah. What does uruhiyyah mean? Ibadah. Because ma'ana al-ilah we just said is what? You negate every ibadah from everyone. Uruhiyyah, al-aliha, ya'lahu, ma'luh, ayil ibadah. The ibadah, you negate it from everyone else. Mm -mm. Rightfully. Right, there's no one who rightfully deserves to be worshipped alone. You've negated it. After you've negated it, there's something else you need to do. Ithbat. Which is what? Only affirming it for Allah. Now, the Arabic language, this concept which is nafi and ithbat, when they come together, so we say nafiun plus ithbatun equals hasr. Nafi and ithbat equals hasr. What does that mean? It's very important, you need to know this. It means you negate from everybody else and you firm it for something or someone. That means exclusivity. That this is exclusive only for one person or for one thing, whoever it may be, whatever you're doing. And that's what Tawheed, La ilaha illallah stands on. You negate, what do you negate? Al-ibadah. Ubudiyah. Rightfully lacking. Haqq. The 
that ibadah rightfully you negate it from everyone else. And you affirm and you affirm the ibadah rightfully for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Does that make sense now? Very good. That's when you have what? At Tawheed. Very good. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into ifradullah bil ibadah. What does it actually mean to single Allah in ibadah? So that's important. Ifradullah bil ibadah means singling Allah in ibadah. Okay. But what does that mean? So the way for us to understand that, the way for us to understand that is we have to understand what ibadah means. We have to understand al-ibadah. And we will, we will not be understanding ibadah if we don't understand that the ibadah is of two types. Ibadah, which is al-ta'abud. Al-ta'abud is, the first one, is the action of the slave. Pay attention here and focus, it's very important. At ta'abud. At ta'abud is what? The action of the slave. Because you're the one who's going to stand up to do this. So when we say ibadah, we mean at ta'abud, your action. Okay. The action of who? The slave. The thing that the slave is doing, the action he's coming with. That action of yours has to be done with two things. Pay attention. It has to be done with what? Two things. So the action of ibadah, the way you, you pray, the way you fast, the way you prostrate, the way you slaughter, the way you supplicate, the way you do hajj, those are actions. Those actions, the way you do it is with ghayatul khudu' Complete humiliation. You strip yourself from any hole and quwa. I'm not strong. I'm not able. I'm a weak slave. You give, you humiliate yourself. Humiliate yourself for Allah wa ta'ala. That's the action. Am I making sense? It has to be ghayatul khudu' complete humiliation. And the second one is ghayatul hubb and complete what? Complete love. Whilst you're humiliating yourself, you're in complete love. Now pay attention here, it's very important. Sometimes a person may be bullied by a person and they might humiliate them themselves. The bully might tell you to put your face in the, into the ground and, you know, and force you to do things you, you don't want to do. Does that mean that whilst you're doing this for this bully, that you have come with what? Complete love and complete khudu'ah? Abadan. Even in the khudu'ah, you've only come with it physically. He's humiliated you, he's put you in a... You've done it for him. Whilst you, you're in hate of him, you hate him, Allah is not like that. Whilst you're putting your face on the ground and in that dust, whilst you're fasting because he told you to fast, and you're accepting you're a slave. Pay attention. As I said to you before, you have, a, you have a rope placed on your nose. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, The believer is like a camel held from the nose. He goes wherever he's told to go. Slave. Whilst you're being told, go right, okay, go left, you are in complete submission and you are humble. And you're also in love of it. You love every part of it. Pay attention. If you refuse, pay attention. This is very important, my beloved brothers and sisters. This is where the problem arises. If you say, uh -uh, I'm not going to do this to the master. Then what does that show us? There's a deficiency in your love. That's what the poet said. Ta'asil ilaha wa anta taz'um hubbahu. You disobey Allah and you claim his love. 
You're not humiliating yourself for the master. He told you to prostrate, you never prayed. He told you to fast, you never fast. He told you, men, these are your rights. Women, these are your rights. This is what you get, this is what you get women. This is what you get men. And you said, no. Women's right, men's right have to be changed. It has to be looked into. You disobey him and his rulings. Wallahi, that claim of yours saying that I love Allah, I love Allah, when your actions are all going against what he said. That's not true. If your love is completely in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would have obeyed him. Because the one who loves someone, he obeys him. He obeys him. You see a man who's in love in his, with his wife, his wife tells him to do this, okay. Okay. He does everything for her because he loves her. The same is with a wife who loves her husband. He tells her to do something, okay, she does it because she loves him. But if a wife does never do any, she doesn't do anything for her husband, he tells her to stand up, she sits down. Or she tells him to sit down and he stands up. She asks him to do this for him. He doesn't do it. And then he tells her, I love you so much. Would she accept that from him? How about that? She will never accept that from him. Nor would he accept that from her if she did that. So how is it that you claim Allah's love? But then when we, we look at your actions, there's nothing in accordance to what he has commanded. فتنبه, this is important. So now you realize feminists, uh, those except they have left they have left ubudiyah servitude they are fighting with being slaves they are fighting with ghayatul khudu' ma'a ghayatul mahabbah complete humiliation and complete love that's what they are fighting with because remember my beloved brothers and sisters and I know I'm going off topic here but it's because of the importance that I have to mention it we as the creation the reason why we have to humiliate ourselves to the master and the reason why we have to show complete love is because he sees the whole picture. And he's setting for us rules and regulations that are in our, that are in our favor. That work in our, our good. He, the rules and regulations that he put, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sees everything from outside, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows what's happened. He knows what's happening. He knows what's going to happen if it happens and how it will happen. He even knows what hasn't happened. If it was to happen, how it would have happened. He knows that. You don't. You don't even remember sometimes what happened. You sometimes, you don't even know what you're doing at that particular moment sometimes. Let alone the future to come. Let alone the things that haven't happened if it was to happen the way it would have happened. So then you want, you then claim, you know the masalih and the mafasi, the good and the harm. What's good for people, what's good for men and what's good for women. Kayf. They were going to turn away from the master who sees everything. This is that you need to realize, my beloved brothers and sisters, where the mawtinu niza, where the debate and the discussion and the battle is about. This is where the battle is. A group of people are saying to the people, you're a slave, aren't you? Ha. You're a slave, aren't you? Yes, I'm a slave. The master commanded you. And follow the command of the master. No, it's no buts. Another group are saying, no, nope, I'm going to question the master. That's what feminism is and those who are fighting against feminism. Araftum, this is the khulasa, this is the zubda. So don't make it into a uh, discussion and a dialogue with them. The thing that they need to be spoken about is al ubudiyah This is what the discussion has to be about. Not what men's rights are and what women's rights are. And how men's rights are being, Islam has given men more rights and women have less rights. Or vice versa. Now that we've understood this. That is ghayatul khudu' and al ghayatul mahabba and ghayatul hubb. We are now swiftly going to move on to the second thing that al ibadah stands on, which every single one of us has to understand. And that is al muta'abbadu bihi. Al muta'abbadu bihi is the thing that you want to do. We spoke about your action, the way you need to do your action. The way, how do you do your actions, my beloved brothers and sisters? Complete love and? Complete humiliation. We've spoken about your action. But the question arises is that, what is it that I have to worship Allah with? This is where the problem arises now. The person is coming with ghayatul hub, huh? and ghayatul mahabba and love, but the thing he's worshipping Allah with is what? It's not an ibadah. Or oh, this ibadah is not legislated. Sahih? It's not a legislated ibadah. 
So this is a bid'ah. It's dulk, rayatul hub and rayatul mahabba. It's wrong. Or another group of people are doing rayatul hub ma'a rayatul mahabba in something that is a other than Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Now we're going to have to understand this point. Very important. al muta'abbadu bihi Sorry, just take that little dot off. al muta'abbadu bihi is what? Shaykhul Islam ibn Taymiyyah defined it. And he gave a very comprehensive definition. What it means. He said, al muta'abbadu bihi The thing that you're going to worship Allah with has to have this definition. It needs to, this definition gives you the explanation of it, which is what? Ismun jami'un لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ الله Everything that Allah loves. وَيَرْضَاهُ And is pleased with. So this thing that you're worshipping Allah with, it has to be something He loves. It has to be also something He's pleased with. سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ It can be speeches. وَالْأَعْمَالِ It can be actions. Those actions can be External actions or internal actions. Pay attention. So it's everything which Allah loves and is pleased with. Whether it's a speech, whether it's an action. Whichever action it is, internal, external. That's what muta'abbadu bi is. So we have to know what Allah loves and is pleased with. Pay attention, my beloved brothers and sisters. Pay attention here. It's very important. So what did we say al muta'abbadu bi? The thing you worship Allah with. That you make your ibadah. What is it, my beloved brothers and sisters? It is something Allah loves and something that Allah is pleased with. Something that Allah loves. Something that Allah is pleased with. Does that, do you see my point now? How would one know what Allah is pleased with and that which He loves? How would you know? How do you know Allah loves this? And how do you know Allah is pleased with it, subhanahu wa ta'ala? The way to know that is, huwa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the messenger of Allah. You and I never met Allah. You and I don't receive revelation. For you to tell me that Allah loves this and is pleased with this, you have to get it through the revelation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the wahi. If the Prophet tells us that Allah loves this, and he's pleased with, we worship Allah with it. If we don't get it, then we have nothing, we, we don't worship Allah on this. This is not an muta'abbadu bi. The quick example for this would be salah. Is salah something Allah loves? Yes. Is it something Allah is pleased with? Yes. What's your evidence? Wa aqimu salah. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا Verses in the Qur'an. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ that Allah does not, is not pleased with prayer and that Allah does not love prayer? No, He does. Based on what? Based on those evidences. Does Allah love fasting? Naam. Is He pleased with it? Naam. How do you know? Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyu ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyamu, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Is Allah pleased with zakat? Naam. Wa atu zakat. Is Allah tabarakum ta'ala pleased with hajj? Walillahi ala nasi hijju al-bayti man istata'a ilayhi sabila. So all of these actions, we have evidences for them. Allah is happy with it and Allah is pleased with it. We now go to the opposite, which is what? An action that the people do, but they don't know whether Allah loves it or is pleased with it. And that is what? Celebrating the Prophet's birthday. Mawlid nabi Celebrating the Prophet's birthday. Is it something Allah loves and is pleased with? No. It's not something Allah loves, nor is he pleased with it. How? Because Allah did not tell us. Because the Prophet ﷺ didn't tell us this. And the fact that we don't have Allah and His Messenger telling us this, that shows us that He's not happy with it nor is He pleased with it. So you to now come and worship Allah on celebrating the Prophet's birthday is wrong. Because you don't know whether Allah loves it. Nor do you know if Allah is pleased with it subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said, the way to know that is 
by the revelation. I've spoken about this point, which is a tuhidul uluhiyah, what it means, and what it stands on. Inshallah ta'ala, next lesson, I'm going to be speaking about the opposite of tuhidul uluhiyah. What goes against ifradullah bil ibadah. And as I said, and I always say, is that the opposite of every single thing is important for you to know because the perception becomes good. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to be talking about the things, nawaqid, things that nullify at tawheed al-uluhiyah. Nawaqid tawheed al-uluhiyah. We'll be speaking about that next lesson. Anything that I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ 